Welcome to the Tales Landian Gardens Real Estate Weekly News for March 17, 2021. I'm Tales Lim Martinson. And I'm Gabrielle Durham. Here is your weekly news for today. A gunman killed eight people, almost all women of Asian descent, at three Atlanta spas. Here is Chief Correspondent Riley Conklin with the news story. Riley, are you there? Talesland and Gabrielle, a gunman shot dead eight people at three massage parlors Tuesday evening. Six of the victims were of Asian descent, all but one were women. A 21-year-old white male suspect, Robert Aaron Long, has been taken into custody. Anti-Asian hate crimes have surged since the start of the pandemic. The group Stop AAPI Hate says nearly 4,000 anti-Asian crimes have been reported over the past year. Several cities, including New York, have said they would deploy more police officers to Asian neighborhoods in the wake of the attack. Despite many in Asian American communities saying more policing does nothing to fix the underlying issues but contributes to systemic, structural racism. I'm Riley M. Conklin, Chief Correspondent from Atlanta. Back to you. Talesland and Gabrielle. Thank you, Riley. Report finds a third of Kevin deaths tied to lack of insurance as Dems reintroduce Medicare for all. Gershwin Owens reports live from the hospital. Gershwin, are you there? Talesland and Gabrielle, before I discuss the news article, let me tell you that I have a mask on because I don't want to contract the virus. A new report by Public Citizen finds about one third of COVID 19 deaths in the U.S. were tied to a lack of insurance. Nearly 537,000 deaths have been reported since the start of the pandemic. Millions of infections would likely have been prevented under a Medicare for All system, says Public Citizen. This comes as Democratic Congress members Pramila Jayapal and Debbie Dingell are introducing the Medicare for All Act of 2021 today one year after the first COVID-19 cases were confirmed in all 50 states and the District of Columbia. The bill has over 100 co-sponsors. President Biden has rejected Medicare for all, even though the majority of Americans support it. Reporting live from Vian City Hospital, K95 member Gershwin Owens, Tales Landian Gardens Real Estate Weekly News. Thank you Gershwin. At this time, there are no zombie apocalypses. Luckily, vaccinations are still underway. The World Health Organization begins to increase vaccines for Kevin Hall spots. During the time, tribal groups open up inoculations for all Oklahomans. We now go to Isabella Gonzalez in the health clinic for more information. Isabella, are you there? Talesland and Gabrielle, CNN is reporting the White House is planning to send additional vaccines to emerging coronavirus hotspots in an effort to stem new surges, including those linked to variants believed to be more contagious. Although overall cases have sharply declined since this winter's surge, over a dozen states have reported a rise in new cases. In Oklahoma, the Chickasaw Nation and other tribal territories have started offering vaccine appointments to all Oklahoma residents. Native Americans have been disproportionately hit by the pandemic, but tribal health providers have outpaced many states and counties in getting out the vaccine. Modern is starting human trials on its vaccine in children and babies starting as young as six months old. In Washington, D.C., the Senate confirmed Isabel Guzman to lead the Small Business Administration, where she will oversee the implementation of the Paycheck Protection Program, a key part of the recently passed coronavirus stimulus package. Reporting live from the Viont City Health Clinic, Isabella Gonzalez, Tailslandian Gardens Real Estate Weekly News. Back to you. Tailsland and Gabrielle. Thank you, Isabella. That is definitely one big huzzah for the state of Oklahoma, that's for sure. The World Health Organization urges against vaccine passports due to widespread inequality in access. Here is Angela Winchester Grayson from Vion City. Angela, are you there? Tailsland and Gabrielle, the World Health Organization urged caution for countries considering vaccination certifications, including the potential use of vaccine passports. We now speak to Dr. Michael Ryan, Executive Director. We have to be exceptionally careful, because right now we're dealing with a tremendously iniquitous situation in the world, where the likelihood of you being offered or getting a vaccine is very much to do with the country you live in, very much to do with the level of wealth, the level of influence that you or your government has on global markets. Hopefully the vaccines will roll in as soon as possible. From Vian City, Angela Winchester Grayson. 
Tailslandy and Gardens Real Estate Weekly News. Thank you, Angela, for covering that story. My my my, this is going to get more happier than ever, wait until you hear this. A new report details a horrific blaze that killed dozens of refugees at Yemeni migrant jail. And Knuckles the Echidna has more. Knuckles, are you there? Tales Lyndon Gabriel, the Human Rights Watch published a report Tuesday on the devastating fire that killed at least 60 refugees, most of them from Ethiopia, at an immigrant jail in the capital Sanaa earlier this month. The blaze was reportedly triggered after the security forces launched projectiles into the jail, where refugees had been protesting their conditions. This is one of the survivors of the fire, Ibrahim Mahamed. The smoke went through my nose, and I was suffocated and passed out. I covered myself with a blanket and jumped through the window. I saw my friends burning to death. In other news from Yemen, dozens of protesters stormed the presidential palace in the port city of Aden Tuesday, demanding payment of delayed wages and better living conditions. The protesters, who were public sector workers, left peacefully after they delivered their demands. The U.S.-backed, Saudi-led war and blockade have crippled Yemen's economy and created the world's worst humanitarian disaster. Reporting lit from the Taleslandian River Regional Penitentiary, Knuckles the Echidna, Taleslandian Gardens Real Estate Weekly News. Now back to you, Talesland and Gabriel. Thank you, Knuckles. You can learn more about the topics Yemen, refugees, immigrant rights, and Ethiopia at democracynow.org. A Colombian journalist accuses paramilitaries of rape and torture in testimony to inter American court. Elizabeth Black Sabbath Willigan has more on that story. Black Sabbath, are you there? Tales London Gabrielle, the Colombian journalist Jeanneth Bedoya has accused state-backed, right-wing paramilitaries of abducting, torturing and raping her in 2000. Bedoya told the Inter-American Court of Human Rights that she was abducted outside a prison in Bogota while on a reporting trip. She was then drugged, beaten and repeatedly raped by several attackers. At the time, Bedoya was investigating U.S.-backed, right-wing paramilitary death squads in Colombia. Bedoya said she has since faced decades of persecution, intimidation and constant threats. Colombia is attempting to block the Inter-American Court of Human Rights from moving ahead with the case by seeking the recusal of five of the six judges. Bedoya spoke about the impact of her case in a video posted on social media earlier this month. To bring my case before an international court is not only to vindicate what has happened to me as a woman and as a journalist, but to open a window of hope for thousands of women and girls who like me, had to face sexual violence in the midst of the Colombian armed conflict. And she said sexual violence is the case in Colombia. From Bogota, Colombia, Elizabeth Black Zabeth Willigan, Tailslandian Gardens Real Estate Weekly News. Back to you, Tailsland and Gabrielle. Horrible. The UK lifts the cap on the nuclear arsenal as the US considers a plan for $100 billion Cold War era missile. Car Marshall has more on that story. Kyra, are you there? Yes, Gabrielle. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced his government is lifting the cap on its nuclear stockpile, increasing the number of Trident nuclear warheads by over 40 percent. The move ends three decades of gradual nuclear disarmament. Meanwhile, in the U.S., a new report by the Federation of American Scientists says plans to build a new $100 billion nuclear missile are being driven by industry lobbying and politicians whose states will economically benefit from the project. Despite objections from military and civilian leaders around the cost and lack of security relevance for the Cold War era weapon, the cost of building and maintaining the ground-based strategic deterrent, or GBSD, which would be built by Northrop Grumman with help from Lockheed Martin and others, would swell to $264 billion over the coming decades. Kira Marshall, Taleslandian Gardens Real Estate Weekly News. A filibuster debate heats up as Biden backs reform. McConnell threatens scorched earth in Senate. Tanya Kensington Gardner has more on this story. Tanya, are you there? Thanks, Gabrielle. The debate over the Senate filibuster continues in Washington, D.C. On Tuesday, President Biden said he supports a return to the talking filibuster, which requires senators to delay a bill by talking on the Senate floor. Earlier in the day, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell threatened he would go scorched earth if Democrats moved to eliminate the filibuster, turning the Senate into a hundred-car pileup, and warned Republicans would retaliate with conservative laws if and when they retake the Senate. On Monday, 
Senate Majority Whip Dick Durbin took to the floor to call for an end to what he called legislative rock bottom. Today, nearly 65 years after Strom Thurmond's marathon defense of Jim Crow, the filibuster is still making a mockery of American democracy. The filibuster is still being misused by some senators to block legislation urgently needed and supported by a strong majority of the American people. At least two Democratic senators, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, have objected to doing away with the filibuster, though Manchin recently indicated he may be open to reforming it. Tanya Kensington Gardner, Tales Landing Gardens Real Estate Weekly News. Thank you, Tanya. The Senator White House calls for probe into the Federal Bureau of Investigation's 2018 background check of Brett Kavanaugh. Tamara Mondo is in Washington, D.C. this time. Tamara, are you there? Democratic Senator Sheldon Whitehouse is calling on the Justice Department to probe the FBI's 2018 background check of Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh, which Senator Whitehouse says was politically constrained and perhaps fake. Justice Kavanaugh was accused by Christine Blasey Ford of sexually assaulting her when they were both teenagers, as well as several other allegations of sexual misconduct. But the FBI failed to interview Blasey Ford and others who came forward during their investigation. White House is also raising questions about Kavanaugh's history of substantial personal debts, which seemingly vanished shortly before Donald Trump nominated him to the Supreme Court. From D.C., Tamara Mondo. Tail Slandian Gardens Real Estate Weekly News. Thank you, Tamara. Trust us, we have two reporters from Washington, D.C. in one newscast. This just in. A 16-year-old daughter of the January 6th Capitol rioter testifies in court of father threatened to kill her. We now go to Chief Correspondent Shadow the Hedgehog with more. Shadow. Are you there? As investigations continue into the deadly January 6th United States Capitol insurrection, a 16-year-old testified in a court hearing against her father, a Texas 3 presenter who allegedly set up a security company to circumvent gun laws. After the riot, Guy Riffer threatened to kill his two teenage children if they reported him, saying, Traitors get shot, back to you, Tailsland and Gabriel. Thank you so much, Shadow. In Nashwood News, 3,000 Columbia graduate workers go on strike after failed union negotiations. We now go to K95 member and chief correspondent Maxine Rutland with the story. Maxine, are you there? Gabrielle, over 3,000 research and teaching assistants at Columbia University have gone on strike after two years of unsuccessful negotiations with the prestigious college over their union's first contract. Graduate workers are seeking fair wages improvements to health care and child care provisions, as well as protections against discrimination and sexual harassment at work. Workers say Columbia has threatened to withhold pay for those on strike and is spreading anti-union messaging to students. I'm Maxine Rutland, Chief Correspondent and K95 member, TGRE Weekly News, Columbia University, New York. Here's another story in New York. Taxi drivers slam Mayor de Blasio's letter bailout, demanding debt relief in the process. TGR Weekly News reporter Danessa Dare has more on that breaking story. Danessa, are you there? In more labor news from New York, taxi drivers have led daily protests for you over a week against Mayor Bill de Blasio's plan he claims will offer relief to heavily indebted taxi medallion owners who have suffered even more economic loss during the pandemic. De Blasio's plan does not provide any debt relief and instead offers modest loans to taxi drivers to pay off their debt, a root largely because of the artificially inflated cost of taxi medallions. Bayard Vedesi of the New York Taxi Workers Alliance said, It's a cash bail for lenders while drivers are left to drown in debt, foreclosure, and bankruptcy. The mayor's plan is a disgraceful betrayal from a city that already has blood on its hands from New York City, Dana Sadir, Tales London Gardens Real Estate Weekly News. Now back to you, Tales London Gabriel. Thank you, Danessa. We now go to the weather with Miles Tales Prower. Tales London Gabriel. In the Chaseville Santa Angela metropolitan area alone, it is 70 degrees. In the Caden County Tri-City area, it is 91 degrees. And in the cities in the Stepford County vicinity, it is 89 degrees. All of which are cloudy. So happy to hear. Now let's go to Darnay Nichols, also known as Pixter Cat, with the traffic report. I cannot understand why. Traffic is running smoothly today without a single backup or accident. Well. The stock market seems to be a bit off, but there are no sports events going on today. 
Well, enjoy your St. Patrick's Day and stay safe out there. I'm Tails Limardinson. And I'm Gabrielle Durham, and this has been your weekly news for St. Patrick's Day, March 17, 2021. <laughs>